Hi everyone, I'm Anu Katharison, fertility physician and doctor mom, and here to educate on fertility. In this video, we'll be talking about embryo transfers, what the process involves, and what to expect. So let's talk about that now. Preparing for your embryo transfer day. The first important thing is make sure that you've been following the instructions from your clinic. So meaning following the calendar, following the medication instructions, making sure you started the medications at the right time. You just wanna make sure that all of that part of the process went smoothly. The next thing is thinking about what questions you might have about the embryo transfer day so that you can anticipate things. For example, what you should wear, when to arrive, who can come with you, how long to anticipate being there. So just think of what questions you might have for the day so you can anticipate everything in advance. The other thing I would say is make sure that you know where to go and at what time. At our clinic, we have different clinic locations and it happens occasionally where the patient might go to the wrong location for their transfer day. So make sure you know where you're going and what time to arrive. Make sure you're factoring in different variables. For example, traffic, weather. If you live far from the clinic, it may be good to stay in a nearby hotel just to help take any stress off the day as much as possible. On the day of the embryo transfer, you'll be instructed to come with a full bladder. The reason for that is, is that the uterus will often point upwards called an antiverted uterus. The full bladder, which the bladder sits above the uterus, so a full bladder will help to straighten out the uterus. And that helps us just giving us a straighter path into the uterus for the transfer. The other advantage of the full bladder is that it helps us to visualize better on transabdominal ultrasound. So when you come in that day, you'll go over some more instructions with the nurses and then you'll get ready for the procedure. So we'll have you undress, put a gown on, and then you'll meet with some of the people that are gonna be involved. So first you'll meet with the physician and they'll go over the embryo information, the morphology, how it went through the freeze thaw process and answer any questions that you might have. Then we'll move you into the procedure room and you'll meet with the sonographer who will be doing the transabdominal ultrasound and also the embryologist who will verify your name, date of birth, your ID badge, the multiple checks that are in place to verify both the patient and the embryo. Then we'll proceed with the procedure. So some clinics will give the patient oral Valium, some will do IV Valium. Either way, we're trying to help with relaxing the patient, relaxing the uterus, relaxing the pelvic muscles in order to make the process smoother. Then we will proceed with the procedure. So the physician will put a speculum in and we will use a swab to wipe the outside of the opening of the cervix if there's any mucus there or medication there. And then we will perform a gentle flushing with media of the cervix. And then we'll introduce the catheter. And we will use a Wallace catheter. And there's two parts to the catheter. There's an outer sheath and then an inner sheath or an inner part of the catheter. So with both in place, we will introduce them into the cervix and then we'll watch on transabdominal ultrasound. And we just wanna make sure that the catheter will slide in nicely from the cervix into the uterus. So once we feel that that is the case, then we'll tell the embryologist to load the inner catheter and we will remove the inner catheter that we have in place, keeping the outer catheter there. So the embryologist will then load another inner catheter and they will bring it to us. And then we will slide gently that catheter through the outer catheter and then into the uterine cavity. And we're visualizing where we are on transabdominal ultrasound. So there's a certain distance that we're aiming for below the top part of the uterus. And once we get the catheter in that position approximately, then we're ready to inject the embryo. So the catheter is attached to a, a very small syringe. And so we will very gently and very slowly inject. And on ultrasound, what we will see, because the embryo is microscopic, we are not able to see it, but we'll be able to see two air bubbles. And in between the air bubbles is the embryo. So we will slowly inject. And then once this is finished, we will slowly and gently remove the catheter. 
And then once we've completely removed the catheter, we will hand it back off to the embryologist and they will take it back to the lab and they will flush out the catheter just to make sure the embryo has not stuck to the wall of the catheter, which can sometimes happen. If that's the case, then they'll reload the embryo into another catheter and they will bring it back to us and we will perform the procedure again. After the procedure is complete, the patient will rest for a brief period of time. Studies have not shown that an increased length of resting after the embryo transfer improves success rates. So we'll usually have the patients rest for a period of about 20 minutes or so. And then after that, they can get up, they can use the restroom, and then we let them head home with the plan to relax for that day. And we strongly encourage for patients to take it easy, especially for the first 48 hours. Though again, no studies necessarily suggest that this improves success rates. The two-week wait can be one of the most difficult parts of this process, so I usually remind patients, make sure that you're following your calendar, make sure you're taking all the medications properly. If any questions or concerns that you're keeping in close contact with your clinic and with your um, clinical staff. And then aside from that, just trying to take it easy, do things that you enjoy, things that help to distract you and take your mind off this process. So for example, um, taking walks with your partner, things that you're not being too vigorous, but it just helping to take your mind off the process. And then the last thing is anticipation of the next step. So being prepared for the best case scenario, but also the worst case scenario and what the next steps would be. So at our clinic, we already have the uh, visit set up so that if we're unsuccessful, we are going to meet with the patient, review the cycle, review what information we gathered from that cycle and how things went, and see if there's anything that we can use to help us with making recommendations for the next steps. Know that it can be a quick journey for others, sometimes a long journey for some. So we're always doing our very best to get you pregnant as soon as possible. But all we can do is take it one step at a time and just do the very best that we can. That is it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, I hope you'll give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe down below. If you have comments or questions, you can leave them for me there also. Thank you again so much for watching and see you in the next video.